The first law of thermodynamics, kinetic and potential energy. Okay, so before we can really start talking about thermochemistry, which is our goal, we need to understand one of the most fundamental laws of science, and that is the law of conservation of energy. It's also called the first law of thermodynamics. You'll see it both ways. And all it says is that during any process, energy is neither created nor destroyed but it can be converted from one form of energy to another. And so that's what we're going to discuss in this presentation. So let's look at kinetic energy first. And this is just the energy due to the motion of some object. Okay, so an object's motion gives it energy. And the equation for kinetic energy is just one half mv squared, where m is the mass of the object, Notice it's in kilograms, okay? And then V is the velocity of the object, and that's in meters per second. If we plug in kilograms, meters per second squared, then we're going to get kinetic energy in joules. Okay, so now potential energy is a little bit harder to visualize, but this is stored energy due to the position of some object. And there are lots of equations to describe potential energy, but one of them is this. So P, the potential energy is equal to m times g times h. And potential energy is also in joules. m is the mass of the object in kilograms. Again, not grams. g is the gravitational acceleration constant, and that's 9.81 meters per second squared. And then h is just the height above ground of the object. Okay, so your turn. So look at each one of these situations and decide whether it is kinetic energy or potential energy that is being described. So pause the presentation and take a guess. All right, so a stone sitting on a cliff, okay? So that's high above the ground, all right? It's just, it's sitting there, that's potential energy. But if we kick it off the edge, then it's going to fall from the cliff to the ground, and that's kinetic energy. Okay, so it's actually converting potential energy into kinetic energy as it's going to the ground. An arrow flying toward a target is kinetic energy. Okay, so it's in motion. And our bird perched on a pole from the previous slide, that guy, that's potential energy. So he's just sitting there. Okay, so there's other forms of kinetic and potential energy, and basically you should just keep these in mind. I'm not going to go into great detail on them, but we have thermal energy, and this is atomic and or molecular motion in a substance, okay? We have radiant energy from the sun in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Electrical energy is the flow of electrically charged particles and the energy stored in chemical bonds, we call that chemical energy, and then also there's energy stored in the nucleus, and that's nuclear energy. And like I say, this is not an exhaustive list. There are quite a few others. Okay, so let's go back to the law of conservation of energy. And we said that energy could be interconverted from one form of energy to another form of energy. And that's gonna be forms of kinetic and potential energy. Now, as we're doing this, though, the total energy of that system is staying the same. So it's remaining constant, okay? So here we have our kinetic energy plus our potential energy, and that's going to be equal to some total energy that will remain constant for this system. Okay, so now for an example, let's go ahead and look at a ball on a ramp, okay? So here's our ball, and here's a U-shaped ramp, okay? And this guy has some height. Okay, and when we place the ball at the end of that U-shaped ramp and just hold it, so what do we have, potential energy or kinetic energy? Okay, yep, so we have potential energy because the ball is distance H off the ground. Okay, so energy of position as we hold it motionless. Okay. Now, let's allow our ball to roll down the ramp, okay? Now, what type of energy does the ball have? Potential energy, kinetic energy, or do you think it has both? 
All right, so when the ball is somewhere in this position, kind of like anywhere in here, then we would say that it has both potential energy and kinetic energy. The ball is moving, so that's kinetic energy, and the ball is not at ground level. Okay, so it's not at the bottom of the ramp. So it has potential energy and kinetic energy. But in this process, potential energy is being converted to kinetic energy as the ball rolls down the ramp. Okay, and so here's just another way of looking at that. So we have kinetic energy increasing, okay, and potential energy decreasing as that ball is, you know, lower and lower on that ramp, less height. Okay, now think about this. Where on the ramp is the potential energy completely converted to kinetic energy? So think about that, and we'll go to the next slide. All right, so if you guessed at the bottom of the ramp where the height is zero, okay, then you would be right. So the potential energy there is zero. Now, of course, we can visualize if we let go of the ball, it's going to be moving, okay? So at the bottom of the ramp, that's all kinetic energy. Okay, so here's an example that involves a calculation, okay? And we're going to go through this step by step. But this is an example of calculating this interconversion of energy. So we're going to take a 5.8 gram ball and we're going to throw it straight up in the air with an initial speed of 25 meters per second. Now, we want to know what is the maximum height in meters that the ball will rise when we do that. Okay? And you're allowed to assume that there's no air resistance, okay? And the initial height of the ball is ground level. So, yes, you do kind of have to crawl around on the, on the ground in order to do this. But we're going to say the height is zero to simplify our problem. Okay, so as we get going on this, let's go ahead and ask a few questions of ourselves, okay? So we want to think about what we're doing before we actually dig in. So what type of energy does the ball start out with? Okay, so you're, you're throwing the ball up in the air, okay? And what type of energy is that? Okay, remember we're starting at ground level. And then we want to think about how we can figure out how much total energy there is in the system, okay? All right, so now if you were thinking that the ball starts out with only kinetic energy, then you're right. And so the ball starts out at ground level, so there's no potential energy, just kinetic energy because it's moving, okay? Now, how can we use this information to figure out how much total energy there is in the system? Okay, so think about that for a second. All right, how much total energy? Well, think about it. At the beginning of the throw, the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy because the potential energy is zero, okay? So if we go up here to our equation, then we see kinetic energy only, this is zero, so kinetic energy is equal to total energy. All right, so now it's time to do a few calculations, okay? So we can calculate this amount of kinetic energy that the ball has, and we're going to use our kinetic energy equation, okay? And remember, m is the mass of the ball, but it's in kilograms, and uh, v is its initial speed. Okay, now remember to convert grams to kilograms. Okay, so I've shown that here, but you should make sure that you can get the right answer. Okay, so now start plugging things in. Okay, so here's our mass of the ball in kilograms. Okay, here's our initial speed, meters per second, and then the whole thing is squared. Okay, don't forget that. And when you do that, then you're going to get 3.6 joules, okay? Because a kilogram meter squared over second squared is a joule, all right? So if we plug that in, then our total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus zero potential energy. So our total energy is 3.6 joules, okay? Now, why do we care about that? Because bottom line is we're asked the maximum height that the ball will rise, okay? So we're not done with the problem yet. We have total energy. We figured out the kinetic energy, but we're not finished. We don't know how high that ball is going to go. Okay, so now let's think about this again, all right? So as the ball rises, 
it's going to reach a point where it will a split second be motionless okay but it'll be way up in the air okay so that's just potential energy okay all the kinetic energy has been converted to potential energy okay and now our equation just tells us the total energy is equal to the potential energy okay so now I bet you can think of a way to calculate the height the ball goes up okay using that all right so yes so we can use our potential energy equation okay so mass times gravitational acceleration constant times h and we're going to calculate h and that's going to be in meters that's going to be the height of our ball okay now at the top of the rise of the ball that is all potential energy it's equal to the total energy so we have 3.6 joules to work with okay so let's go ahead and plug everything else in obviously the mass stays the same here's g and our total energy and then now we're just going to solve for h okay and when we do that we're going to get 63 meters so that ball rises 63 meters up in the air that's the maximum height okay so what should you be able to do with this okay now you want to be able to describe and recognize common forms of potential and kinetic energy okay you don't have to know all of them but you want to be able to recognize them and especially if told a few features about them and you also want to be able to use the equations for kinetic and potential energy and calculations like we just did so calculations that are like that you'd also want to be able to discuss the types of energy present and finally you want to use the law of conservation of energy also called the first law in calculations involving the interconversion of potential energy and kinetic energy